Hi everyone. Hello. We're back again. Um, this video, we want to talk about a certain set of BBC dramas. Now, we love the BBC. Mm -hmm. They're really good with their dramas and their documentaries and such, but sometimes they, they can get it really wrong. And we've experienced that with the series, the most recent series of dramas that were, that are, should I say, not were, um, adaptations of Agatha Christie novels. Now, of course, this is, a, we're going to be talking quite in depth about why we have issues with these dramas. So there's going to be spoilers for the three, um, which were, uh, and then there were none. Uh, witness for the prosecution mm. and ordeal by, ordeal innocence. by innocence so if you don't want to be spoiled then please turn off now mm. and uh, we're going to go through each of them so the first one that came about was and then there were not and mm -hmm. then there were none it was christmas what about three years ago now probably something like that it was like three years because i think Aiden turner two years ago i think two. um because it was when you, you had your... Right, Christmas 2017 should have been Ordeal by Innocence, but they made it Easter. Easter, yeah. year before that was... was Witness was for the Prosecution. So it's a year before that. Was, yeah. It was... Um, and then there were none. Yeah. So it's 2015. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Three, Three years, years ago, ago this year. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, so they so, said, you know, Aidan Turner was in it because they had the first series of Whole Dark Are Dead at that yeah. point. And, uh, you know, it was kind of running off the back of that, really, mm -hmm. wasn't it? And it wasn't... It wasn't, well, it was promoted quite a bit, but it wasn't promoted as, like, the key thing to watch over Christmas, you know. It was it was just an, a drama on the, kind of... It was in, in, it was just in the schedule. Um, yeah. It was, it was New Year time, wasn't it? It wasn't well, Christmas. It was, well, no, it was sort of that in-between, because yeah. it was multiple episodes, and he did it multiple Those weeks, Those so days was, are so strange yeah. between Christmas and New Year. I never know what day it is. I never know what date it is. It's weird. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of, you know, it, it, to fill that kind of gap, the BBC shoved it in their nine o'clock slot on a Sunday evening kind of thing. Now, the thing is, with these dramas, it's not the Christie I have a problem with. It's the adaptational mm. choices. Yeah. It's the things so like... It, it's it's shot beautifully. It's, oh, it's yeah. Yeah, the, there's so many good bits to it but it's the actual adaptation of it that really is the issue so yeah so we're going to start with and then there were none mm -hmm. and that is about 10 people that get invited to come onto a, an island yeah uh from all different walks of life for all different reasons they get invited um by mr and mrs owen uh and to, you know to do various things and one by one they start getting killed off and it's all about trying to figure out who is the killer, why they're doing this. Yeah. All that chat. Yeah. Um, until there's only one left. Yeah. You know, it's it's a very, very clever story. It is. The novel, well, well it's not really a novel, is it? It's a, it well, it is, but it's it not. It's, it's, yeah, but, you know, because it's quite, when you look at it, yeah. it's not that. But Christy had this amazing technique where she could tell you so much information with a few words. Christy was a genius. Yeah. You didn't was feel that you wonderful. needed pages and pages of description. What she could do mm. in such a succinct yeah. and sparing manner mm -hmm. was incredible. Yeah. Which I think is part of the reason why I have a problem with these adaptations. Mm -hmm. And then there were none did not need to be three hours long. No, it didn't. It, it, it was really too didn't. much time. And for me, it it lacked tension. Yeah. I didn't... I understand why they had to adapt the ending. And for, for this first one, to be fair to the writer... Mm -hmm. She didn't it, do too it, bad. it is in order. Yeah, it is was, sequential. But there, but there were some choices that were made that were a bit like. I well, one of one of them was just a bit like, "Would you really do that in that situation?" And the other ones really annoyed us about the reason why they're there. Yeah, I mean, right. So here's here's the deal. Um, by the way, we're doing spoilers. Did you say spoilers? Yes, I did. Did you say spoilers? Yes. Right. Spoilers, okay. Spoilers, the thing, one of the things I did not like. I didn't like the fact that the little the soldiers on the board were so, some kind of Picassoized female body. 
like like distorted, bodies, distorted and twisted. Some and of them had heads, some didn't. It, some it had was, arms and legs. Some I didn't, didn't like it, that. Yeah, were, I didn't like I didn't, that. I didn't necessarily mind that, but at that point, I hadn't read the book because I yeah. saw the drama, read the book, went back to the drama, and went, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't like that personally. Yeah. I didn't like the way that. Right, for example, I mean, we did say this in another video. We have talked about this before. Yeah, but not not in a dedicated yeah. thing. Yeah, I didn't like the way that. Now, for the perpetrator of these crimes, mm -hmm. breaking the law by lying in court is as serious a crime as murder. Yes. Yeah. Now, that's all that Christie puts this person there for. Yes. But it's serious. It's a very, very serious crime. Yes. In the eyes of the perpetrator. Yes. What was not necessary was for this man, out of the blue, to just suddenly decide that he's going to murder a gay man because he's gay. Yeah. And I don't care how beautifully it's shot. I don't care how, how richly, like prepared it looks it was unnecessary yeah and homophobic yeah and it was unnecessary for a female character in yeah. in the story it was a whole thing about her maid and um he got into trouble as you know as into said, trouble into trouble uh and she threw her out rather than realizing she's a human being yeah, she and, made caring a mistake for and she needs help and caring for in the book she had that's it but they in this drama what they did was that she actually had a thing for the maid and was yeah. so appalled that the maid didn't um show that love in return to her. I do I do that think they did actually do out. she did do the pregnancy and because she was so disgusted that this girl had had the temerity to have sex with a man with and a get man. pregnant. Yeah. She threw her out. And I, I right, I don't, I don't mind. You know, obviously, there's always in kind of any story the possibility there's going to be people who are homophobic and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not the issue that of homophobia that I have that that's yeah. there. The issue that I have is that they're saying that their issues, you know, homophobic that, that them being you know, gay themselves and everything, and that is what fuels their violence mm -hmm. and fuels their crime. Mm -hmm. That is what annoyed me. Yeah. Um, another thing I didn't like, Aidan Turner's character is supposed to yeah. be the equal of uh, Vera, Vera, I can't remember what her surname is, uh, the main girl's character. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be equals. And he was essentially reduced to eye candy. Mm. Aidan Turner is a fucking phenomenal actor. Yeah. Okay. And he's he's very, that character. Yeah. You got so much information on that character and the tone and the way he talks about the crime that happened with him um, in Africa. Yeah. And how one person actually responds to his words, and she says they're people too. Mm -hmm. But just that wasn't because, done. And that wasn't done. And, and, so he got reduced to just being like, yeah, I just killed a bunch of people. So uh, and it was just, what is actually, that? Actually, I forgot to mention, um, before she gets, before she dies, mm -hmm. and they keep dying off, mm -hmm. she says, it's Jews at the bottom of it. It's yeah. always Jews. And I'm like, no, you completely, this character yeah. does not feel like that about yeah. people. Yeah. Yes, she is, she is a terrible person because she has made a, a horrible judgment on a girl who she could have looked after. Yeah. And she, because of that, this girl kills herself. Yeah. That was a terrible thing for her to do. But the only redeeming quality that that character has is the fact that she understands that everybody is human. Yeah. So for this screenwriter, for them to turn around and make her into this racist caricature of an yeah. elderly lesbian, it drove yeah. me crazy. Yeah. I was so angry yeah. at that yeah. and i feel like the problem with these dramas and this goes from all of them yeah. is that this writer has decided to sex them up 
Yeah. And so, they don't need so, it. And you could see that very, very vividly in a sequence that happens in the drama, which doesn't happen in the book, where yeah. there's four of them left. And at that point in the book, there That's is terrifying. so much. They are literally all in a room. Each one of them is sat in a corner and they're watching each other constantly. Nobody moves. They like, they're like they eating food, but they're constantly staring at each other. Nobody leaves the room. They just sit in their corners. And you hear, you, you kind of like jump from character to character and hear mm. their thoughts. Mm. And obviously as you're reading, you know who the yeah. characters are. Yeah. It's so cleverly written. Yeah. Whereas in this one, they're like, you know what? Let's just get all the alcohol, all the music, and we've got some drugs. And got let's some just coke. have yeah. we've got some coke. Let's just all have a massive piss up. And that was that was and you saw them getting high and dancing and you know, replaying the record which told them basically why they were there for the crimes, which is what begins kind of mm-hmm. once they've arrived on the island for them to begin to start getting freaked out. Yeah. And just laugh at it. Yeah. And meanwhile Aiden Turner and the woman who played Vera are just kind of looking at each other mm-hmm. and begin having sex. And yeah. it's just like, no, no, it's, no, it's, no. You see, I don't <sighs> I love him as an actor. But I did. I actually thought that Toby Stevens was miscast as the Doctor. I really do. Mm-hmm. Um, there was well, just there was, there there was, was just... some other there were some other like, issues with casting. So like, um, oh gosh, uh, the the servants, the Rogers, Mister Rogers, Mrs. Rogers. Yeah. I liked them, but yeah. then at the same time. It, it, it just didn't feel like they belonged mm. there. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't because. And of, I think you know, Charles Dance. They shouldn't have cast Charles Dance. Oh, Sam Neill. Sam Neill. He wasn't old enough. I don't think he was young enough to play. The, yeah, he was. Oh, he, he wasn't was old young. enough to play the general. Yeah. Toby Stevens, I felt like, as much as I admire him as an actor, I, I think what the direction, the, it was more the direction than him, to be fair. I felt like it was all hysterical. And actually, in the book, the Doctor is one of the few of them that manages to keep himself together. Because yeah. um, there, there is a sequence in the book where Vera gets hysterical and he goes up and slaps her across yeah, the face. And they, reverse and they that. reversed it. So he's going hysterical and she slaps him across the face. I mean, to, was... to be honest, it th- that's that's kind of by the by. But um, I, it, the, the, what the, the book has so much tension and twists and it's ten- like, it's like piano wire. Yeah, and it you really just try, is. And you get tighter and tighter yeah. and tight. But you lost that, and instead they, they sexify. Like the bit where they're going, they're trying to find a gun, and so everybody has to take off their clothes and have their rooms completely searched. Yeah, that doesn't and, happen. Uh, you see, Vera gets told to change into a bathing suit, which she, which she does, and the doctor is seen in a gown but Aidan Turner's there with the smallest towel possible mm-hmm. wrapped around his waist yeah. and it's like no you don't need that see in you the book they do all search the rooms but they don't strip off no. they don't that that isn't necessary yeah. and um that yeah the stuff like that that I I don't like I don't I don't like it because look I am not a prude by any stretch of no. the imagination. No, and right? if you've watched our videos before, you exactly. know that. You know that. I, I am all for flesh and blood. Yeah. I'm not a prude in any way. No. But Agatha Christie falls into a particular sub-genre mm-hmm. of crime fiction. Yeah. And that is the cosy mystery. Mm-hmm. Now... I understand that as to some people perhaps that sounds um, like I'm doing Christy a disservice. I feel what Christy did was she used the the archetype of the cosy English village as the backdrop to murder to make it more shocking. But yeah, that doesn't I mean, mean that even the characters the, have to be... Yeah, and even Christy herself, when you look at her work, she kind of has levels of 
the cozy the murder. Because if you look at and then there were none and compare it to a Miss Marple. Yeah. Miss Marple is chocolate box exactly. kind of stuff. It's, she's she's, she's poison chocolate box. Yeah. Yeah. Poison the cyanide. Yeah. The she's you know that cyanide. kind of stuff. The secret, yeah. Yeah. Sparkling cyanide, all that lot. And then and and then there were none. You don't have a lead detective no. looking for them. You don't have any of that stuff. You have these ten people that are completely isolated on the, on this island, and it is so well constructed. It's just that choice of sexying it up was a downer. Yeah, and then it was a phenomenal hit, and it, it helped. Hit. It helped yeah. that Aidan Turner because a Paul Dark was such was a big there? hit, yeah. and he was in it, so it got people in and such, and they went <sighs> okay. I think we could carry on with this. Yeah. So then they did witness, witness the prosecution, prosecution the following year. And that was just... I've <laughs> never read Witness for the Prosecution. I will I will admit that. I haven't either. I've got a copy I do of it. know the synopsis and yeah. I know who did it and yeah. I know why they did but it. Even, even just going in, it was two episodes rather than three. Again, it so, was too long. So I was like, okay, well, I was thinking that's yeah. better than the three that they had for and then there were none, but let's see how it goes. And literally within 20 minutes or so of the first episode, I was bored senseless. Yeah. It was just... It took a long, a long lot time to start. Kind of slow-mo dancing in a, you know, in a bar with like smoke around and she's there and the glitz and the glamour the skin and control I, like, I'm sm- I don't know because maybe this is cruel of me to say mm-hmm. but I really do admire Kim Control as an actress I think she is wonderful mm-hmm. uh, I saw her on uh, Who Do You Think You Are and she came across as a very nice yeah, very warm hearted um, woman recently she was the main star for the portrait of the year that the, for the National Gallery, right. she was her portrait. Yeah, she she's beautiful. Across. She's a lovely person. Yeah, a lovely, lovely woman. Mm. Very, very talented actress. Yeah. But since Sex and the City, she has been typecast oh, yeah. as the sexy old woman. Yeah. Now, I I mean, I re- recently rewatched Sex and the City, and I'll be honest, it has aged very, very badly. Yeah. Uh, there are things in it when I look back now that might have been funny, but They're now <laughs> in the era of Me Too, yeah, and the era of a much more um, social awareness of sexual harassment and um, the the kind of the way that women are expected to be in society, um, I look back on it and I think. Oh, God, no. God, yeah. no. In the second episode, Carrie is in this artist's loft and his art is videos of him having sex with models that do not know they're being filmed. Yeah. That's a crime yeah. right there. Yeah. And I thought... And this Samantha is... kind of hears it and she went, I'm up for that challenge. I could be good as a model. And she goes along with it, doesn't she? I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. like... It, I, at the end of the day, Sex and the City was written by a man. All yeah. right, fine, he's a gay man, fine. But he's not a woman and he doesn't know how it is to be a woman. Mm-hmm. And there are things that they say, things that they do, and I feel like it is it, it is aged badly, yeah. basically. But since Sex and the City, Kim Cattrall has been typecast yeah. as the sexy old woman, and that's absolutely fine. But I I don't know why, but casting her to do that bothered me Mm. a lot. Mm. And I don't, I I, I don't mean, I don't mean to like do her down as an actress. She has to work. She has to go where the work is. Mm. And I, I do understand that. But I, I'm i not sure I would have made the choice to be in this particular thing, but but that's just me. Yeah. Um, so, however, so she gets in a relationship with a younger waiter yeah. called Leonard. Yeah. And they have this sort of weird encounter where he makes her a bath and she gets in it and it's all very... Weird. Weird and yeah. sexy <laughs> and distorted records playing and... 
a cat walking across the room with blood on its paws and yeah it, it, it's it's very odd it's very very and odd you see her body and then you see her body yeah but but it's all sort of yeah so he gets put in jail and then he gets this lawyer played by toby jones, jones yeah to defend him and he ends up he's got a girlfriend who's yeah. a singer in a it's kind of sleazy bar thing. Yeah. Um, and it, it was it just, just kind all, of... The let's look how it se- crazy. Let's, let's how look how sexy this couple is and not bother to talk about the, the story. The reason, <laughs> the reason I'm pausing is because there's this great big gap in the middle where I can't actually remember I, anything literally, happening. <laughs> literally, I remember like those first kind of 20 minutes or so with the... You know, introduction of the characters, you see the murder, you introduce the girl, and Toby Stevens is like, yeah, yeah. And then the next thing I remember is the final scene of Toby Jones walking, walking into the, the sea, sea. Well, as I, they drive away. I, I no, like, what happened was he gets let off, and then the lawyer realizes that he got it wrong. Yeah. And that it was the guy that killed her. Yeah. Well, when weirdly, they were... in the drama, I th- uh, what I can remember, I think he actually tells him to his face, and that's when he walks out. Yeah, and, and that that's he why tries... Toby Jones then walks into the sea to kill himself. No, 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 that isn't it at all. It was not Toby that's... Jones goes into his, once he's realised that he's basically allowed these two murderers to go free because she had left Leonard all her money mm-hmm. in a will. Mm-hmm. Um... He goes to his wife, tries to have sex with her to the point of almost raping her. Right. And then she she gets on him because their son died in the war and he sees no point in his life and walks into the sea. Right. And I was just like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. This isn't... A witness for the prosecution is like, and then there were none. There's a there is a stage play of yeah. it because Christy did adapt a lot of her plays for the stage, for the stage yeah. or novels for novels. the stage, yeah. and I think that's probably about two hours long. Yeah, but but the drama is the trial. Yeah, not the shit around the trial. <laughs> yeah, and like that that's that's the thing in Christy. The mystery is the star. Yeah. Not the ins and outs of their private lives. And I just... Yeah, that, nah. that, that one just kind of passed me by. I never bothered re-watching it. I never bothered wanting to get into it. it but it again, was just kind it was of, very it was pretty. Just, it was very beautiful. I will say that. did a lot that. of slow uh, Yeah, lots of slow And I think that's shit. what made it so boring. It was like, okay, we've got a slow motion sequence of a cat walking and now a girl singing. Distorted record and that, playing. Yeah, yeah. A vase, a yellow carpet. So that kind of thing. It was just kind of, are we going to actually get on to the story now? You know, that, oh, that's at least that right. was me. That's right. They accuse the maid and the maid goes down, down for, for it. it. That's yeah. right. Monica Dolan yeah. played the maid. Yeah. And... It wasn't her. And again, actually, they had it where she had a thing for Kim Cattrall because everybody has to be in love with Kim Cattrall. Yeah. Otherwise, the plot doesn't work. No, in actual fact, what you can have is you can have a servant with a mistress-servant relationship and the servant just be loyal to their yeah. employer. Exactly. That's perfectly allowed. Exactly. It's like, yeah, everything's about sex. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then, ordeal by innocence happens. Right, so Ordeal by Incest was meant to be on at Christmas, at Christmas but, but then there was a scandal that happened with one of the cast members. Edward Westwick. Ed Westwick. I wasn't going to say the name. Okay. Everyone knows who you're talking okay. about. All right. Um, and so it got shelved and they refilmed uh, with another actor in his place um, and it got moved to Easter. And... Audio by Innocence, I had read it before, but it was years ago. Yeah. And I started watching it, and I knew it, because I was thinking it was a Miss Marple, and the reason why I realised I thought that is because ITV did a load of dramas and Miss Marple. Yeah. Um, but they did do <laughs> Miss Marple ones where she isn't, it isn't actually a Miss Marple no, novel. No, but they made it and, Miss Marple. Yeah, 
Yeah. Well, it's very easy because she just randomly turns up because she's somehow connected to one of the characters. But that's um, where all in, the, in this one, is, she it? was the best friend of the new wife in the yeah. family, uh, her, the mother of, of the new wife in the family, sorry. Um, and th- it was a Miss Marple and mm. Richard Armitage was in it and mm. stuff. And it was one of my favourite because of Richard Armitage. Yeah. So that's why I was thinking, oh, it was uh, Miss Marple. And no, 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 it's not. And I realised, right, okay. Uh, and I reread it. And I got a radio play of it and that, and good God, it was, oh, so bad. <sighs> First of all, I think this is a rule 101 for regardless. You do not, in any circumstance, change the killer in an Agatha Christie drama. You do not, under any circumstance. Right, it's like you can change slightly, like who dies necessarily. In regards to, hang on, let me just clarify. In regards to, in the ITV drama, because uh, Richard Armitage plays the husband of the eldest daughter, who's yep. wheelchair bound because he has who polio. Matthew Good played. Yeah, and in the book, his character gets killed off. Yeah, but in this. Miss Marple drama, he didn't get killed off, and instead it was the the new wife. The okay. new wife. So it it wasn't a character who was fundamental to the next step. Mm-hmm. They just took it on a different route because of the whole thing of well, what would make Miss Marple stay mm-hmm. to see this out, mm-hmm. and it was because she she raised this woman as if she was her own daughter so she knew she was best friends with her mother and her mm. mother had died so therefore she was kind of in a sense the mum figure there for her for mm-hmm. her wedding day and she got killed right, okay. so that is what kept miss marple there and that's what kept miss marple to look into the case right so you know so you see what i mean so that's in that kind of regard it's not too bad mm-hmm. But when you're trying to be faithful to something... It's like Shakespeare. It, yeah. You, what you do is you let the genius yeah. do the work. Yes. You let the genius plot the plot points. Yeah. You let the genius write the words. Yeah. In Shakespeare's case. Yeah. So, Mr. you know, like like we were saying about the, uh, the latest Romeo and Juliet movie. Yeah. When they gave Juliet Romeo's lines, Romeo, Juliet's lines, they changed... They change things. It's like a carriage clock. Yeah. Every part has a job. Yeah. And for the clock to work, all the parts have to be in the right place, yeah. saying the right lines and doing the right things. Yeah. Otherwise, the whole thing makes no sense and it doesn't work. Yeah. And it's the, so, it's the same for Christy. Yeah. So Christy believed that you can do a lot mm-hmm. with not much. Yeah. Very true, yeah. You know? So, Odia by Innocence is about a family who uh, have, it's, uh, you know, the parents, there's a maid, and they have, what, one, two, three, four kids. Four, four adopted kids. Four, yeah. Um, five. Five. Five adopted five kids. Five adopted yeah. kids. But the opening sequence happens, the, the, um, the mother of the family is murdered, and one of the sons... Uh, Jack, uh, Jacko is Jacko. Jacko is taken into custody for her murder, and he claims that he's completely innocent. That there was this man who drove him um, to a certain location at the time that the murder took place, so therefore he's injured. But the man never came forward, uh, and so he gets hung for for the crime. Mm-hmm. And it's about two years later or something, and uh, this man shows up at the family home and says. I was the alibi. I just didn't know. I was out the country. I yeah. had no idea this was going on. Yeah. Um, and so I'm here now. Let's get him out. And they went. Mm-hmm. They tell him no. He actually died in prison. Uh. Well. Oh no. No. Sorry. Uh, in the Miss Marple, the ITV Miss Marple, he was hung for it. But in the book, he's he dies in prison. He becomes ill. He gets pneumonia. Right. Uh. And, and, and in the drama, he's beaten <coughs> to death. Yeah. He's beaten to death. Uh. And um. So they're like, right, well, in that case, it was one of us then. Yeah. And they're trying to figure out who it was. Yeah. And, <sighs> yeah, it had so many alterations, such as changing the killer, um, changing what people were doing that day. 
changing the, the the actual character of who gets who picks him up and also like, changing the, the whole obsession backstory. with nuclear war yeah i mean the nuclear bunker I, that's, I kind that's of, randomly under the house you know what annoys me though if if at the beginning of the drama instead of saying based on agatha christie's novel inspired. you'd said inspired by Agatha Christie's novel. Yeah. So basically the word inspired means this is not Christie's novel, yeah. but I'm taking the it's characters like, and doing my yeah. own thing so with them. as another example, The Greatest Showman is inspired by the life of P.T. Barnum. But it's, it's not, not based on his life. <laughs> you know, no. It's because yeah. he was dick. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just found it so... Oh God! Just so oddly. So they had random. they had they had this thing that the, the man who's the alibi. He is um, a scientist. He's been uh, um, in it's the Antarctic, isn't it? That's what he tells them. Well, that's not yeah, the truth. no, no. It, but it, no, in in the in the book, he, right? He's a scientist. He's been in the Antarctic. Um, that's his whole thing. Whereas in the drama, they had it that that was a story that he made up. He was actually. Um, at a mental health facility and had escaped. He was in an asylum. Yes, but let's not let's not make it twee and modern. No, I'm just <laughs> okay. He was in an asylum. He was in I was an just asylum. trying to be. I was just trying to be respectful. I know you way. were. Um, yeah, he was in an asylum. He had escaped and randomly been able to find a car and steal it, and he picked up Jack all on the way, and he got kind of captured again and that's why he didn't know about it because he was locked away he didn't mm -hmm. have access to newspapers yeah why couldn't he have just been a scientist who was away i don't know but i've got to say the uh, one person in it the one person in it who i loved mm. was matthew good yes as eleanor tomlinson's husband yes he is having a whale of a time. <laughs> he clearly was enjoying himself because he's yeah. kind of like uh, the thorn in the paw of the family because yeah. he just tells it as it is. And yeah. He goes basically, fuck all of you. You're yeah. all dickheads. He tells, he, he tells them like, directly what he thinks of them. He really he does. He doesn't care. He does not care. And I really liked that about his performance. Yeah. That he had a very... And he kind of knew he was going to die. Yeah. I think he knew. He had like as, a... soon as, as soon as, because when it was his secret to die, he sort of turned around and he just saw his face and he went, oh, it's you. Yeah. And he kind of smiled and then yeah. that was it. He was gone. I could have done without the urinating at the restaurant table scene. Yeah, the, that what was, was pretty what gross. What the hell was that about? That was pretty fucking gross. That was gross. Um, yeah. Uh, there, there, was, there, were, there were other little things little irks the whole backstory of the maid um there was uh, kind of there was some unnecessary moments especially like co the complete emphasis on how abusive verbally abusive the mother was and there was a point where one of one of the children um oh god what, which what's her name uh, not Tina, the other, the other daughter. I know who you mean, yeah. Um, I felt like... she. Uh, there's a point where she's calling her a, a dirty girl. Oh, oh my God, she, that was and so she's, horrible. She's, and she, and she's, 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 she's a black she's girl. Black, she's black girl. And you're calling her... Oh and, you're call, and she's saying, you're you're nasty, you're filthy, you're, you're dirty. And it was just a bit like, oh, that is so unnecessary. Cause, because of... I kind, I kind of get why, because of what she's just told her, yeah. there's something that's happening. But then at the same time, it's like, in the book, there isn't really an emphasis on she was so abusive and she was this and that towards her children. They turned that up to the max. They, oh, they? God. It was kind of like, uh, there was like when, when she and one of the other children got brought to the house saying, this is your new family. And then Dad's like, uh what the hell like she was bringing the children in to get her husband kind of and so she she got really angry with jacko wasn't it there was a scene where they're doing elocution lessons That's and right. because of his accent 
he can't say a certain word. Yeah. And she she beats him with a yeah, ruler. She does. In front of everyone. Uh, but isn't it's, that, there's that scene in the conservatory as well where Jacko is having a go at the local councillor and kisses him on the mouth. And they make it... Yeah, and essentially... He points at Jacko saying, you did this to my wife. And Jacko actually puts that guy's finger in his mouth like yeah, this and, it's, and he and he shoves his hand up the wife's skirt that's on right. the stairs which she really likes yeah and it's like oh god why are you they're doing basically this? making jacko this horrific sex loose pest. cannon <laughs> sex pest yeah and it, it's sort of it's almost like saying well of course it's him because look he's so terrible he's yeah. so awful and i i just didn't think it was necessary no it just wasn't necessary the, the backstory change with the with the maid yeah. was ridiculous so i'm going to tell you what happens in the book now right so it turns out that the the killer in the book is the is the maid, is the maid yeah um cuz what she basically jacko manipulated her and made her believe that he loved her. Yeah. And she she is the one who felt she raised those children. She was the real mother to yeah. those children. She knew them really well. And it's an even age, yeah. No, 20 years, and she, like, gets two grey hairs, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's, it's just, yeah. So, uh, so she got manipulated by Jacko, and he said, basically, kill her. We can then run off with the money and be together. But Jacko was actually married so when they got, he got arrested, the wife turned up on their doorstep and said, "Look, I'm married to Jacko. Mm -hmm. um, I need I need your help, um, basically." And she was so appalled that he betrayed her. He she let him rot in jail. Mm -hmm. She didn't. She did refused. To, well, she didn't actually tell him yeah. that she was she was going to turn her back and not be his alibi because that was a thing she would. Rescue alibi, yeah. yeah, and so she lets him rot in jail. Rot in jail. Mm -hmm. Now, in the drama, they changed it so that she is actually Jacko's biological mother. Mm -hmm. That she had been raped by yeah. the father, of yeah. the family, when she was young. She bore his child, and um, the mother of the family she uh she kept track on where the baby she took was. Care of her. She yeah. took care of her. And then when the child was old enough she brought the child back to the house as the the adoptive child without telling her husband. Mm -hmm. And so she could raise her child mm -hmm. by proxy. By proxy. Yeah. Uh and there was the whole yeah, and when Jacko because the killer in the drama was actually the father mm -hmm. played by Bill Nye. Um, which was a really stupid thing to do. Uh, he was he went to the prison and there was uh, you know, some kind of a heated discussion. I can't remember the exact words that were said. And I'm going to salt your garden was one of them. Yeah. Uh, and so in order to keep his mouth shut, uh, he got his son. Basically beaten to, beaten to death in prison, so he killed yeah. Jacko as well. Yeah. Now, right, so they changed that. What then really annoyed me was the fact that the kids figure it out when they're in the forest and run to the house because the supposed scientist guy uh, was in the house and they knock on the window and they're like, get out the house, get out the house. Do what you can to get out the house. And, of course, the dad's there in the doorway behind them. And it's all about them getting him to kind of confess. And the next thing you know, there's a funeral. And the new wife thinks that he's drowned himself in the lake, as do all the police, mm -hmm. and they don't find the body because he's actually locked in the nuclear bunker downstairs. In a fairly good condition. In a fairly actually. good condition, yet to live there for the rest of his days and everybody thinks he's dead so he's gonna they're basically gonna kind of starve him to death <sighs> and that's it and it's like but do you know what was weird about it is that you were supposed to see that as a triumph yeah and i don't i don't either i see that as that's fucked up i'm yeah. sorry but that's just not right yeah it's just not not the right thing to do. Yeah. I just, oh, I don't know. I get, I get it. I get that. 
if this like, had been if this had been a one-off drama mm -hmm. about a family and that happened to mm -hmm. I probably would have liked it. My problem is by Agatha Christie. Yeah. With the same names, mm -hmm. the same title, but doing it completely differently to Agatha. Yeah. That's what I have a problem with. Now, I know, like, the Christie estate would have had to approve Yeah, and this. it did. Yeah. Because they would have sold the rights. I don't know if... if if they have like an approval thing, no, they do. I, I, I don't know. Maybe they, they do because they had to. That had to be explained when the fans went crazy and saying, "What the hell do you think you're doing, Jane to the Killer?" Yeah, and it was like a grand, great grandson or yeah, something who who came out and said, "I approved it." Yeah, just FYI, I approved it, and um, to allow Christie to appeal to a modern audience and it's like you don't need to do that to make it appeal to a modern audience it's like, how many Agatha Christie stuff books or dramas oh, God, audio books get sold every year yeah do you really think it needs to have an, a, something to make it appeal to a modern audience do you know what you it's... and I you and I love Poirot mm. David Suchet as David Poirot, Poirot yeah. there is nothing I love more on a rainy day, yeah, shove on a Poirot, yeah, do some sewing because yeah. we're sad like that, and just and just relax yeah. and go it's into a Sunday afternoon, absolutely Sunday into afternoon, a genteel, just, gentle just, oh, world, yeah, just a, with a bit of cyanide and a bit of murder, <laughs> but like, I don't need it to be sexed up, no. There is sex there. Yeah. It doesn't need to be like everywhere. And I just I I've they've they've announced that they're Do doing you know, the ABC yeah. murders. Do you know what also and baffles like, me? Do you know what also baffles me? I forgot to say about about um audio by incidents. There's a random car crash where the um supposed oh, scientist right. gets driven off the road by the that counsellor guy. I don't even that? know if that happens. I don't in even the book. know. I don't no, know. no, no, it doesn't happen in the book. It doesn't happen in the book at all. And um of course the the guy dies by going through the windscreen and I suppose the scientist guy just kinda goes Okay. And then he walks back to the house and then mm. no one ever mentions it ever again. It, who was <laughs> that? Why did they do that? What was the point? Oh oh <laughs> and there's the younger daughter and the Tina. mother, Tina, she went. She ran away with the boy she loved. Yeah. She got pregnant, and her mother, mother made, made her have an abortion. Yeah. Why is that even necessary? It's not in the book at all. Because in the book, Tina's actually engaged to be married. Yeah. But she realises um, that he's not the guy for her. And she ends up falling in love with the scientist. Yeah. And it ends with them kissing. Yeah. Whilst okay. he's recovering from the car crash that killed the maid. Yeah. Because she went crazy and they were in the car together and that's she confessed to him yeah. and crashed the car and yeah. he killed her. And expecting him to die as well yeah. so that his secret would remain secret. Yeah. Um, but he survives and yeah. it ends with them sharing a kiss. Yeah. So you know that they're okay. Yeah. But you didn't need the abortion stuff. I, that's just you did, it it's, was just, it's just like fishing for an, for for a reason for her every, to be a yeah, suspect. Let's give every single child a reason to kill want to kill their mother. Yeah. And like Eleanor Tomlinson's character, she in the in the book she she's very much um she was the eldest, she had to make sure her siblings were okay and deal with issues, you know. With them screaming at Jacko, she had to make sure other siblings are okay. So she's always been very mumsy, but she hasn't, and because of that, she hasn't really given herself a life. Um, mm -hmm. And even though she's gotten married, when her husband then contracted polio, it was she then became no. That's, that's not in the drama. In the drama, yeah. she's a spoiled. She's the spoiled she's eldest daughter yeah. who is horrible to her sibling. Yeah. And her husband is a morphine addict because yeah. he was in a plane crash. Yeah. that's paralyzed. Yeah. Him. And I, I actually don't like Eleanor Tomlinson in that role. Yeah. There's a, that moment where she's like screaming in the forest. Yeah. 
I, I, that was probably more the direction. I felt that was overdone yeah. and overblown and unnecessary. And that word keeps coming up. But I do, I feel like this sort of expansion, it's, oh my God, it's and just it's not And it's one of those situations, again, it's beautifully shot. It is beautiful. But that's only the real positive thing I can say. That's it, yeah. It's... It's such a shame because it's such a good story. It is. And it's so clever yeah. how um, uh, Tina, she gets stabbed in the book. Yeah. Because she is the one who the maid gives her the tray and says, oh, can you go, see, go through to see your brother-in-law? I've just got to run and do something. And she goes in, finds, finds him, and... The maid then stabs her yeah. and she drops the tray and the crash was what gets people's attention. Yeah. And when she finally wakes up, because she it takes a, takes a while for her to wake up, yeah. she says there was nothing in the cup or something. It's you yeah. know, to the, that kind of word, nothing in the cup. And they're like, what do you mean? And they realise that the maid, it was the breakfast stuff for him to have in the morning and he always had a cup of tea but she didn't she didn't put any tea in the cup because she knew that he was dead right okay so it's the it's the that's how she knew and it was her way of saying you've got to get yeah you've got to get and get her out there i I just i just feel yeah i mean i don't know what they're going to do with the abc murders because that's a poirot yeah that's a poirot it is a poirot and yeah a poirot without poirot is nothing because <laughs> Poirot is the man and you know it's it's like it's not just these ones for, for the BBC the latest the Kenneth Branagh Murder on the Orient Express film yeah. I went there I was expecting greatness and I got absolute mediocrity I <laughs> no, the, the, only, the only greatness was the cinematography the cinematography again that was cinematography was stunning yeah you've got to you've got to give them that yeah costume design also was good it was good uh, the yeah the choice of johnny depp that was he phoned that performance that was, in it yeah. was like turn up try not to be too drunk yeah and if you could just say these lines we'll yeah. edit ken in later yeah. Um. I don't know. Maybe that's Ken, that's horrible of me. But Ken, he, Ken's version of Poirot as well didn't sit with me. No, it didn't sit right with didn't me. Didn't sit right with me. Um. I don't know if I think because David Suchet is, is Poirot. Poirot. <laughs> he it, he played Poirot for over what about thirty years or something? Twenty five like years. Yeah. Twenty five years. He was Poirot. and he's done every single, every single Poirot, one, including the one where Poirot died. Yeah. Yeah. He, Which he actually. I find really moving. Yeah. I find that very, very moving. It's called Curtain. Yeah. Um, but the, the, my my problem with, with that one was that they comedized him, if that's any such word yes. as that. Yes, yeah. And like the David bit where Suchet. he... There was a bit like where he was walking along and he accidentally walked into some manure with his right foot and he's like, my foot's not level, so he puts his left foot in and he's like, ah, that's better now. You know, and it's like, it just ruined your shoes. Yeah, yeah. It's to me, though, the... The, the accent. Murder on the Orient Express, the Suchet version is definitive. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's the, all I need. <laughs> but Ken Banner's accent was rather interesting. Let's put it that way. You see, Suchet worked on that yeah. for a really long time. Yeah. To make it, make it good and not make it a caricature, mm. and that's the problem. That's like when I said about the woman in white. They hired an Italian actor yeah. who has a, a natural Italian accent mm. rather than an English actor who's, put who's playing an yeah. Italian. Because when you do that, it sounds false. It sounds wrong. Yeah. And you know, I I was watching a documentary about Suchet and coming to the end of of. Poirot and how he went to Belgium and the Belgian people love him and he was being like mobbed <laughs> in the middle of Brussels it was quite sweet <laughs> and um, they you know coming up to me and saying oh Poirot like this it was lovely <laughs> and the, the Brussels police gave him a medal 
for his portrayal of Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> because obviously Poirot used to be a member of the, the yeah, Belgian police. He did, yeah. And um it was lovely, but he said that Poirot is someone you were supposed to laugh with, yeah. not at. Yeah. And that's the balance that you have to strike with him. Yeah. Because he is odd. And he does say funny he does, things. He does say kooky things, but uh, <laughs> we love the, the, the Tom Burke episode with cl the clocks. Oh, the clocks. And how he's watching, he's sat there in a the theatre watching a murder mystery, and he's like, and the, the one character finally finds him ever, and he's like, well, it's about time. You know, it's like... <laughs> Yeah, I saw he, that like three hours ago. He, he just he just can't enjoy it, can he? Because no. it's it's wrong. But no, I, I I okay. I will watch the ABC murders. I will try to enjoy it. I will try. But I to be honest, don't... I think the only thing that's going to make me watch the ABC murders is because Rupert Grint is in it. <laughs> From Harry Potter, I just I think I honestly can't feel that way. I just I would rather that it be. And it inspired by rather than saying it's an adaptation of because it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Because it isn't. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. It's it's such a such a shame. But I think with the Murder on the Orient Express, it didn't help. I know it's gonna sound weird that it was a film version because mm. film audiences expect certain things. They expect a romance, they expect an action sequence or a couple or you know mm -hmm. they expect there's going to have to be certain characters and certain ways shot so it's like there was that whole action sequence of chasing after josh gad as oh. he was jumping down the various parts of the bridge to burn the papers which he didn't need to burn anyway I've got to and say, it was though, just a bit like right okay i did like josh, josh gad, gad in it josh was really gad was good really well, but the thing that also irked me was that when you saw the crime, when they kind of did the flashback of it, yeah. it's meant to be that nobody hears it, that it's it's done in silence yeah. because he is drugged. And yes, yeah. he's drunk tea that's drugged, but he's not out of it. And they have to put pillows on him. They're running in and out one by one and, stuff yeah. and doing that. And it's kind of like Poirot is next door. Yeah, It's the th really thin walls yeah. and you're telling me that he's didn't and hear that they you also know, completely mucked up right he lets them all go because mm. the the thing that the the guy that's killed is a child murderer yeah he lets them all go because he feels that it is justified that he died yes and Poirot needs something to tell the Swiss police. Hmm. And he tells them about this lady with the kimono. But that is important. And they spent no time on that at yeah, all. Yeah, basically, you saw the woman in the kimono running. And then at one point, they were going through luggage. And it was there. And it happened to be in Poirot's case. Um, and it was it was just... A, it, and that was it. It, it, never it made no it sense. Again. But... The the woman in the kimono is so important, yeah. Because I I guess you could argue she's a symbol of justice. True, is it? Yeah, because she she she's seen running from yeah. the the murderer. Yeah, yeah. So I I was I was very disappointed by that. I do sort there of was wish a... that Kenneth Branagh would stop. Like he does it all the time. He casts he casts excellent actors. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, like, Judy Dench outacted everybody. Yeah. As she always does. I didn't like but... the fact that he also had a gun shootout sequence. That was a bit was... unnecessary. Um, it, but unnecessary. It's that, but it's, but it's that, well, I thought I just thought I was going to say wrong, and I thought, you know what, I've been using that word yeah. for a while, you know. Um, the... The, but it's that thing again because a film audience expects sequences to action stuff to happen at certain times and that. But then if, if you're doing a film that's smart and all that, like Chrissy, you don't need those things. Well, it sounds, Just as you don't need the over sexualization and changing people's motives and it changing sounds the It's like at the end of that, work. they've somehow managed to know where Poirot was and went, there's been a death on the Nile. <laughs> yeah. We yeah he's going he's going I know I'm not I'm going on holiday this is the whole point I've got stuck on a train I'm not doing this I'm going on holiday there's been a death on the Nile and he stops and goes 
really and then that's how it ended and, and it then i like, went oh my god <laughs> seriously seriously you're doing this there's been a death on the nile and i was like please that is so bad yeah so bad and i just you know and to be honest i think it did actually quite well it did so it he probably wise. will do another yeah. one god help us all <laughs> but <laughs> we'll just have to see but there's that there's you know even these dramas though they were beautifully shot they were and it was nice that, and it's nice that the bbc is yeah the acting wasn't too bad and it was nice that the bbc picked it up and said this is something for us to do yeah. and it's something wrong. but it's like if you're gonna adapt greatness you need to respect greatness absolutely and i don't mind because we've talked about it before adapting things that there's gonna be some things that they want to play with and that yep. and you have to be open to change but right. there is a point where you go where you cross the line right here's the thing right going back to, like outlander yeah. Right? If you think of it as, as like a circle, at the top of the circle is a thing that happens. Yeah. And at nine o'clock on the circle is a thing that's um, another thing that happens. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Diana Gabaldon will go from 12 to nine. Yeah. The um, TV show yeah. goes from 12 to, to oh, the so, other way. Yeah. Anti clockwise. Anti clockwise. So instead of going. <laughs> the circuitous route yes we go the quick way yeah that's fine as long as you keep the events in order yeah. that clock metaphor was shit i'm sorry <laughs> but taking a shortcut take you take you don't go for you go from like that you go like that yeah is what i'm saying and that's absolutely fine what you don't do is make up your own crap and pull it Put it out as if as saying this is Agatha this is Agatha Christie. Christie, and, and it's what not. I was really surprised was that when the author, when the adapter got criticised for this, the next day she set out a statement saying she didn't care, and she actually swore in a statement. She, did. she went, "I don't give a fuck." Well, she actually for you, said, love. I don't give a fuck what you think. That's fine. It's I mean, my work. It's what I I thought was she best. So also, I did it. She also was the one that wrote the um, Great Expectations that we both love with Douglas Booth. Yeah. She wrote that. That was amazing. Yeah. She's been a writer on EastEnders. Yeah. She was a very good writer for but EastEnders. I, I was I was a bit surprised that she actually swore in it. She could have come out and just said, it was a creative choice that I made. Yeah. Um, I can understand if people are upset with it, but it's yeah. what I felt was right. But she actually just came out and the first line of a statement says, I don't give a fuck. Mm. And it was a bit like, whoa, I'm someone's a bit... A bit. <laughs> You know, but but to be but then that's her personal choice for to, to, to be so. honest with you, like the internet has made people well, it, it's made a lot of things so much more coarse. Mm. And I think if you are an artist, in whichever way you are an artist, mm -hmm. you are going to be criticized, and that's just par for the course, I'm afraid. Yeah. And like, you know, people could. Or she could watch this video and get very angry with what we have said. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we both love and respect Agatha Christie. Yeah. We gave her dramas a chance. We gave her and three years of Three dramas. chances and we found them wanting. And yeah. you know what? Our opinion is perfectly valid. Yeah. You know? Just as the opinion of people who loved it is and, perfectly and valid. And they got really good ratings and you'll get a paycheck at the end of the day. Yeah. So what the hell? And you know, got you're... the next drama's lined Exactly. Up, You've so... been commissioned by the, the BBC for a fourth one. So don't worry about it, love. Yeah. Just sit back, enjoy your money and write what you want to write. <laughs> yeah. You know? And I think we're done then. I think we are. Yeah. So that's what we thought of the various BBC Agatha Christie stuff. If you want to leave a comment and let us know what you think, that'd be awesome. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.